All right, Jonathan Greenblatt, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, let's talk more about the political fallout. CNN's Chris Freights is following the Trump campaign today there in Alabama. Ron Brownstein is a CNN senior political analyst, and Jason Johnson is the politics editor at TheRoot.com and a political contributor at SiriusXM. All right, good to see all of you. So, you know, it's the sequence of events, perhaps, that has been most confusing. You just heard that from Mr. Greenblatt. You know, he says this is very uh, confusing because you've got the disavowing, and then you've got a moment of I'm not going to do that and then reminding people that he did. So, so Jason, what, what is really at the bottom here? What is this all about? How can anyone support or trust a presidential candidate who's waffling as to whether or not he wants the support of a terrorist organization? That's what this is. The Klan is a terrorist organization. If he says, I disavow them on Friday, and if he doesn't know on Sunday, how can you trust him as a presidential candidate? I don't care if you're a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump has, read, has run by saying, I'm a tough guy, I'll handle ISIS, I'll handle al-Qaeda, I'll handle Vladimir Putin, but he can't seem to handle an endorsement. That is something that I think that most Republicans should be legitimately concerned about. And then, Ron, how does this either undermine Donald Trump's uh, candidacy or galvanize his candidacy? Well, first of all, I don't think Donald Trump does anything casually. You know, sometimes his speeches and you're at his rallies seem totally free for him. But I think there is there there, there was something he, he does it with intention. And the fact that he did not specifically uh, re reassert his uh, d disavowal of David Duke uh, in the in the interview today, I mm -hmm. think is significant. Uh, and the fact that he felt compelled when the other candidates came out afterwards after him uh, to and go you ahead. Think that's and that's the and only kind of reason why that. he came out with that kind of clarity. So then what yeah, was his I, objective look, I mean, look, at first in your view? Well, look, I think Donald Trump is drawing support, obviously, from across the Republican spectrum, but he is drawing support from the elements of the Republican coalition that are most uneasy, as we've talked about before, mm -hmm. with the cultural and demographic change that is transforming America. And not all, by any means, not all of those people who are uneasy are white supremacists or racists, but it does bleed over into those kind of precincts or into those, uh, you know, areas. And Trump, I think, was being very cautious about who he was willing to disavow mm -hmm. uh, in this interview. Now, obviously, he's going to go further. I, I suspect that that the comments by the other candidates are going to force him to go further. But, Fred, all of this really underscores the gravity of where we are. We're, we're two days from Super Tuesday, a moment mm -hmm. when Donald Trump has the opportunity to really put a decisive distance between himself and anyone else for the GOP nomination uh, and really kind of underscore the extent to which he is leading the party uh, into the electoral unknown. And it may be too late very quickly for any uh, of the party forces to stop that. And then, Chris, you are in Madison, Alabama, where at any moment now Donald Trump is to address a very sizable crowd behind you uh, we know that some of these groups whether it be you know white supremacist groups whatever you want to call them have been doing these robo calls asking for people to vote for Trump uh, Donald Trump has said he answers to no one he hasn't accepted super PAC money and some of it is financed by super PAC money so how or would Donald Trump try to distance himself um, in some other way from the intention of these robo calls uh, well, when it comes to the robocalls, he said he didn't know anything leaders, about it and he was going to like look Alabama into it. So that's Senator one thing Jeff we'll be Sessions. listening for on the stage today when Donald Trump addresses this rally. So does he talk about the, the robocalls? And that, that Rubio, is not a surprise Rubio, because Marco Rubio, Bill, of course, hitting him on that. Ted Cruz also hitting him on the inability to disavow David Duke or the KKK. So we're expecting uh, Donald Trump here again. shortly, Fred. And we're going to be listening very closely because as Ron pointed out, Donald Trump doesn't do anything by mistake. He, he purposely did. He purposely States. didn't answer the question uh, from our own Jake Tapper this morning. Then he took to Twitter to say that he does disavow. Uh, uh, he does disavow David Duke, but he that that is something uh, that is a mixed message. So we're going to see if he's going to set the record straight here in front of all of these folks here today, and that's part of what we're looking for, Fred. Uh huh. And then Ron, you know, this clearly only further alienates him from the GOP. That's been his mission. You know that he's not the establishment, etc. But then when you talk about members of the GOP who are now trying very hard to stop him, uh, this, this seems like a real problem. Yeah, Fred, first of all, David Duke is not a mystery. I mean, I covered David Duke's races for governor and senator in Louisiana 25 years ago. I've been in David Duke's house in Metairie, Louisiana. So, I mean, he is not he is not someone who is like, you know, uh, I guess hiding under a sheet. I don't know what you would say. I mean, you, you know, he is he is he has been out there. Uh, and, and for Donald Trump to say he doesn't really know who he is, I think, is, is not fully credible. Yeah, Look, he's not a mythical figure. If if, People are familiar right, with his right, name exactly. and his actions. So, 
Exactly. And look, mm. but, 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 but the key issue here, I mean, you know, Donald Trump has his piece of the Republican coalition, and he is in position on Tuesday to do very well both in heavily evangelical blue-collar states in the South mm -hmm. and also to do pretty well in white-collar, less evangelical states in the North. What this kind of controversy does, though, is mm -hmm. I think deepen the doubts among the voters who have been the most skeptical of from, from the beginning, which are more of those white-collar, mainstream conservative voters, exactly the people you saw in exactly the place that Marco Rubio was this afternoon. And the challenge has been no one has been able to consolidate those voters nearly the extent Donald Trump has consolidated the blue-collar side. The question is, at this kind of 11th hour, will this kind of controversy allow someone like Rubio to make more progress mm -hmm. at that? Well, you know, it's a big hill to mm -hmm. climb, but certainly this isn't, these aren't the headlines mm -hmm. Donald Trump wants going into the, the, the biggest voting day of the year Interesting. so far. And, you know, Jason, looking at the crowd behind Chris there, I mean, you know, it's unclear whether a lot of the people even were aware of what happened earlier today, but if they were aware, the turnout there uh, sends a very strong signal that perhaps mm -hmm. his message or how he handled it today really does not bother them. Yeah, it's not going to bother them at all, Fred. It's going to be perfectly fine. Donald Trump is going to continue to be successful. He's mm -hmm. going to do well in the South. Remember, we looked at the poll numbers mm -hmm. from South Carolina. The majority of his voters still think Barack Obama was born in Kenya. They don't want the South to have lost the Civil War. They don't have problems with slavery. So this is not going to in any shape or form hurt Donald Trump. He's probably going to win throughout Super Tuesday, and the Republican Party is going to have to do some soul searching, because I don't think you can win with some someone whose rhetoric consistently alienates growing parts Can't of the American population. Can't win a general population. election, Can't but you can see election. the sweep of the primary caucus season. Most definitely. All right, and Chris, last word on this, since you are there where it's a huge crowd and they're still awaiting the arrival of Donald Trump. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, piggyback a little bit on something Ron said, which is that it's not believable that Donald Trump does not know who David Duke was. In fact, when he decided not to run for the Reform Party nomination back in 2000, 16 years ago, he put out a statement that read in part, and I'm going to quote him here, he said, the Reform Party now includes a Klansman, Mr. Duke. This is not the company I wish to keep. So this idea that he doesn't know who David Duke is, that he doesn't know that he's connected to the KKK, well, that's just not true. And it's important to remind our viewers, too, that uh, David Duke, of course, a former grand wizard, a leader in that white supremacist group. So these mixed messages are something that Donald Trump really is going to have to address because you get the feeling that both Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz, they're not going to let this one go for him. All right, Chris Freitz, Ron Brownstein, Jason Johnson, thanks to all of you. Appreciate it. Thanks much.